Hi guys, see you again with your favorite channel, Shonya Studio. In 1989, the Indonesian government designated ASA as a military operation area. The Indonesian armed forces were also deployed there, in a red net operation. The goal was to destroy the free ASA movement. At the same time, a French civilian aircraft, UTA-772, was blown up by a terrorist group, in Niger, Africa. This explosion killed 170 passengers on board, not far from Niger, a country in West Africa. Liberia is also in the midst of a civil war between the NPFL, IMPFL and the Liberian government. These events seem unrelated to each other, but there is a state, which plays a role behind the scenes, in each of these events. Libya Since being led by Muammar Gaddafi, Libya has become a training center for rebels, and terror throughout the world. Its leader at that time, Muammar Gaddafi, was even referred to as This mad dog of the Middle East has a, a goal of a world revolution, Muslim fundamentalist revolution, which is targeted on many of his own uh, Arab compatriots. Despite being denounced by many Western countries, Muammar Gaddafi was deeply loved by the Libyan people, at least for the time. So who is Muammar Gaddafi, a terrorist, a dictator, or a fighter, and what is his role for Libya? Since 1911, the area that is now Libya, was an Italian colony, then Italy's defeat in the Second World War, made Libya occupied by the Allies, it was during the French and British occupation that Muammar Gaddafi was born, in 1943, Gaddafi's parents came from the Bedouins, who lived simply and could not read, yet young Gaddafi grew up excitedly. Through newspapers and radio Arab voices, Muammar Gaddafi learned how bad the Western and Israeli occupations were, he also admired other figures, such as Gamal Abdul Nasser. Gaddafi also saw how the Libyan Kingdom, which was declared independent in 1951, did not bring significant changes to its people. Instead, the results of the oil wealth discovered in 1959 were not evenly distributed. Change must happen. And Gaddafi chose to fight from within. In 1963, he opted for military education. As a junior officer, he formed a secret organization, the Free Officers Movement, following his role model, NASA. After receiving additional education in Britain, Muammar Gaddafi returned to Libya, and in 1969, commanding another 70 officers, staged a coup. The Kingdom of Libya was replaced with the Libyan Arab Republic. After the successful coup, the Revolutionary Command Council, formed as the supreme power in the new Libya. Backed by a handful of officers, the then 27-year-old captain toppled the corrupt, 
but pro-Western monarchy of King Idris. In his first public address, Gaddafi challenged the two powers that dominated Libya. Despite holding the supreme power, Republican policies favored the people. Muammar Gaddafi quickly closed the American and British foreign military bases, previously permitted by King Idris, nationalized foreign companies and banks, and opened the widest possible employment opportunities for the Libyan people. The wealth from oil is seized and used to build the country's infrastructure. In 1977, Libya was changed to Jamari Arab Libya. Education was free and housing was provided to all citizens free of charge. Gaddafi also ensured the involvement of the people in politics. Hundreds of people's congresses were formed to accommodate the aspirations of the people which would then be brought to the General People's Congress to be ratified and executed by the General People's Committee. It's just that the participation in these congresses, and not a few of its members, were chosen by Gaddafi himself. All forms of organization outside the government, illegal, and any opposition that Gaddafi does not like will be eradicated. Moreover Gaddafi has close ties to the Libyan armed forces. In addition to development, Muammar Gaddafi also used his wealth to establish a world revolutionary center. Here Gaddafi accommodates, trains and supports all rebel movements that he considers to be against Western imperialism or Israel. From Ireland, Sierra Leone, Colombia, United States of America, Palestine, and many more. This activity raises the prestige of Gaddafi, but adds to the list of his enemies, especially from Europe, America and even Africa. Although he has been caught many times for supporting terrorism movements, Muammar Gaddafi has maintained his power in Libya, at least until 2011. In February, 2011, a Libyan lawyer named Farthi Tarbil was arrested. Tarbil is not just a lawyer, he represents every family of 1,000 prisoners who were massacred in Abu Salim prison five years ago. When he was arrested, massive protests took place in Benghazi, who demanded his release, and the government apparatus repressed it brutally. Ironically, this repression actually sparked more Libyan people to demonstrate. Day after day the victims also fell, the Arab League had banned Libya from attending. The United Nations and the African Union have called on Gaddafi to stop the violence, but they have not been heard. The members of the Security Council expressed grave concern at the situation in Libya. They condemned the violence and use of force against civilians, deplored the repression against peaceful demonstrators and expressed deep regret at the death of hundreds of civilians. In the end, the United Nations Security Council adopted Resolution 1973 on the 17th of March, 2011. The resolution adopted all means to protect civilians in Jamari, Libya. And for the United States and its allies, Document 2 has authorized the invasion of Libya. Two days later the American and European militaries in the North Atlantic Pact began to invade Libya, 
At the same time the United States also supported weapons for the anti-Gaddafi group. It didn't take long, on 20 October, 2011, Muammar Gaddafi was arrested and killed. In the end, Libya became one of the Arab countries that was hit by the Arab Spring. The leader who had been in power since 1969 was dead, but the fall from Gaddafi's power would have consequences throughout the Middle East until now.